Let's try to solve this problem here. Ball 1 of mass 150 gram and velocity of 5 meter per second. So ball 1 is over here. Let's label all the things that we know. It's 0 0.150 kg. That is moving at 5 meter per second. Okay, collides obliquely. Obliquely means by at a certain angle. Uh, with a... Uh, Obliquely here probably means some kind of deviation, not like that center kind of collision, but slightly at a certain deviation from the center. Okay, slightly deviated from the center, it hits on ball 2. Okay, stationary ball 2 means my ball 2 was initially at rest. Okay, of mass 200 gram, so you can label this one to be 0 0.200 kg. Okay, after the collision, ball 1 moves with a velocity of 9 meter per second and an angle 60 degree from its initial direction. So now ball 1 over here is moving at 60 degree from its initial direction. So if I label it, right, actually the ball, the velocity of ball 1 final, we should label from the center of the ball pointing upwards. This will be final velocity for ball 1. But because it is at an angle, we can actually resolve it into its x component and its y component okay this is the final velocity of ball one and you can resolve it into x component and y component you know that this is 60 degree over here so reasonably saying here should be 60 degree as well okay zoom in a little bit 60 degrees over here so 60 degrees should be over here as well Okay, so now if you know this, then this Y component is near 60 degree, whereas the X component is far away from 60 degree. So the X component will be sine, the Y component here, which is near the 60 degree, will be cos, cosine. Okay, so let's try to write it down. So you will have your positive B1 sine 60. Why is it sine? It's because it's far away from 60 degree. Why is it positive? It's because it's pointing to the right. And for x dimension, uh, pointing to the right is positive. Okay, for the y dimension, the y velocity will be positive v1 cos, cos, not sine, sorry. It's out of habit because usually y is sine, right? But no, we have to look at where do we label the angle. So in this case, the angle 60 degree is near to the y component. So this one will be cosine 60 degree. Okay, so why is it positive? Because it's pointing upwards. Why is it cosine? Because 60 over here is near the y component instead of the x component. So this will be cosine 60 over here. Okay, you know that ball 2 is moving somewhere else, but ball 2, they didn't specify the angle. They didn't specify what's x dimension, uh, x velocity. They didn't uh, specify what is the y dimension for velocity. So because you know nothing about it, uh, let's just call it as... Um, we know that you'll be moving in the upper left quadrant. So if you want to sketch, you can actually sketch an arrow that looks like this. Let's call it V2 because it's for ball 2. If you wish to resolve it, yes, you can still resolve. You can still get your Y component. You can still get your X component. But for this case, let's just call this as V2Y maybe. Let's just call it as V2X. We don't really know it's cosine or, uh, or sine. We don't know what's the angle. So just label it, label it as X component and Y component. So now we are done with all the labeling. Let's move on to solve the problem. What does the problem, what does the question ask for? They ask us to calculate the velocity of ball 2 after collision. After collision means by final, not initial. Ball 2, so means when they're interested with V2. So we need to answer them what is V2. Okay, again, this is a classic conservation of linear momentum question. What you need to do is just to conserve the X momentum and the Y momentum. Let's do it a bit faster since we have done a few practice already. So we have our X component initial equals to the X component final. Whereas for Y, you have your PY initial is equals to PY final. So this time we'll try to do fully in X first, then after that I'll move on to Y. Okay, so I'm going to move a bit faster and just straight away jump to the last line of equation before substitution. I'll call this as M1 UX1 plus M2 UX2. Okay, you can refer to the previous question if you're not sure how I end up at 
uh, at this line over here vx1 plus m2 vx2 okay so now we know that uh, ball 1 is 150 gram which is 0 0.150 kg we change everything to be in SI unit ux1 ux1 means by object 1 u means initial object 1 initially it's moving with 5 meter per second upwards 5 meter per second upwards means by there is no left there is no right in the motion of ball 1 ball is moving like fully upwards there's no a bit of angle to the left there's no a bit of angle to the right so there's no left there's no right so you can uh, confidently call ux1 as being zero okay because there's no left motion there's no right motion for ball one initially okay so we can call this as zero you know that ball two is 0 0.200 kg and you know that before that is stationary so this will be zero as well okay now you have your 0 0.150 what is vx1 object one object one ball one ball one vx x component x component for ball one final so this will be positive v1 sine 60 degree okay so this one will be positive v1 sine 60 degree you know that v1 here okay v1 they really tell you i believe v1 is nine meter per second okay so you can substitute positive nine sine 60 degree okay m2 here is 0 0.200 vx2 is what we need to find so we are not sure what is vx2 we can just write it down here okay this is what we want to find out huh? v2x is the same as vx2 just flip off the subscript uh it's just there's no issue with it so vx2 here is this which we are not sure we need to get vx2 later so i believe you can see that this whole equation has only one unknown so i believe you key key it in into your calculator you get vx2 to be equals to uh negative 5.846 meter per second actually if you look at this value you think that it makes sense because you can see that the ob uh, object 2 here ball 2 is moving to the left moving to the left in the x component means by it's negative so you can see that vx2 here is negative in value okay so everything makes sense with the theory that we know let's move on to y component then Y component we can continue and say that this is m1 ui1 plus m2 ui2 is equals to m1 ui1 and vy sorry this is a final situation already so this is v vy1 plus m2 vy2 okay so now again substitution 0 0.150 ui1 ball 1 initial y velocity y initially for ball 1 is moving upwards so this will be positive 5 positive 5 because it's positive for upward next is 0 0.200 what's ui2 again ball 2 was stationary initially so you can put it as 0 so m1 again is 0 0.150 vy1 ball one final velocity y component ball one final velocity y component that's positive nine cos 60 okay nine is over here positive nine cos 60 substitute it in positive nine cos 60 degree plus m2 eh, m2 we have value m2 the value is 0 0.200 So now you are left with V, Y, 2. So again, there's only one unknown in this whole equation over here. So you can key into your calculator and you see that V, Y, 2 is equals to positive 0 0.375 meter per second. Okay, so let's see whether it matches with our prediction. In the diagram, you can see that ball 2 is moving upwards. Upwards in Y component is a positive value. So you see that the value here is positive. Okay, so you have get Vx2, you have get Vy2. Technically, you are near the end of the question already, but they ask on velocity of ball 2. You should not just give the x component and the y component only. What you should do is you should combine the x and the y component to get the magnitude of velocity ball 2, and after that, you get the direction through tangent theta. So you can see that V2 is actually a Pythagoras theorem combination of Vx2 the x component square plus vy2 the y component square 
So you can do your substitution. Okay, that's 0 point and negative 5.486 for x, positive 0 0.375 for y. So if you put it into your calculator, I believe you see that the answer is 8.585. 5.858 meter per second. So that is the magnitude done for direction. You can use tangent data. Okay, we will set our data to be this angle over here. This angle over here with data. So you can see that the opposite will be the y component. So V2Y, the adjacent will be the x component, which is V2X. Okay, so now data will be the inverse tangent of y which is 0 0.375 divided by the x which is 8.546 okay. what am I writing 5.846 sorry okay we should remove the negative sign because we already put in the modulus so this is just 5.846 so I believe if you key into your calculator you see the angle is 3.670 degree okay so now you're done with all your calculation. You've managed to get your magnitude and your direction. It'd be great if you can write the final answer in a single line. So you can see the V2 arrow. Arrow represents vector. So vector here represents that we need to have magnitude and direction. So the magnitude we know that is 5.858 meter per second. But the direction is 3.67 degree. Okay, we know that x is to the left. Vx2 is to the left because it's negative for x. Y is positive, so it's pointing upwards. So combination of this should be above the negative y, negative x axis. So 3.67 degree above negative x axis. Okay, so this is how you can answer this question over here. Again, it's a principle of conservation of linear momentum question, but I can see that just by saying that the x momentum is conserved, the y momentum is conserved, you equate the initial and final, you eventually solve everything that you need. So it's a general strategy. I believe the question should be quite uh, doable if you follow through the steps systematically. Okay, that's all for this question. Thank you very much.